All right, welcome to podcast 7.1, 7.2, and uh, the nice thing about this is it is kind of a review of what we've done in the past, because you're going to be looking at things like the mole, although we're going to do a lot more practical stuff, but uh, you've seen a mole, and here's our friendly mole in real life, uh, maybe a face only a mother can love. Gosh, look at those claws. Are those some nails or what? What are the clippers? But anyways, um, just a couple review things here that I want to go over. We did a little bit of this in Chapter 4, and basically the mole is uh, a unit that we use in chemistry. It's super important, and it's uh, it's equal to the same number of carbon atoms in 1 or in 12 grams of carbon-12. And it is a counting unit, and I have used this analogy many times, but 1 mole is like 1 dozen, all right? It's, uh, it's simply a way to represent a number. A dozen equals 12, right? doesn't have to mean donuts, although it's good when it means donuts. Um, but it, it means this number right here. And so whenever we say a mole, a lot of times students forget that we're talking about this many atoms. Or it could be that many molecules or that many photons or that many electrons. There's all sorts of things. But... Um, it's the same mole that we used before in Chapter 4. Now, the thing that we are going to do today that's a little different is this thing called molar mass. right? And you guys have found the molar mass of a single element, like the molar mass of silver there, equals 107 point something. I don't know what it is. Um, but we're going to find the molar mass of a compound, something like water or something. Okay, and so just uh, to give you an idea of what kind of molar masses we're dealing with, I've got a couple interesting pieces of data down here. Uh, right here is our range for uh, atoms. Then right here is when we get into chemical compounds, anywhere from 10 to 1,000. And then if you're talking about some very, very large molecules, uh, polymers, proteins, DNAs, look at that. Can you imagine a, something with a molar mass of 5 million grams per mole? Pretty large. So let's move on to this uh, molar mass of a, a compound. And the thing to remember is when you see a chemical formula, the formulas tell you exactly how many of each element there is. And I've got a bunch down here. Here's, here's the formula of water. Now, we also have a 1 there, right? But we don't write that in. Just like there's one uh, formula unit of sodium chloride is 1Na and 1Cl. But here you can see there's 6 carbons and 12 H's and 6 O's, a little molecule of sugar. And then in something like this, which you would go, oh, that's aluminum sulfate, because you can name things. There's two aluminums. Uh, how many O's? Well, hopefully you go, well, for every sulfate, there's four O's, and I've got three. So three times four equals 12 O's, right? And then how many S's? Hopefully you go, well, there's three S's there, right? So, the way we're going to do this is if we want to find the molar mass of any one of these, whether it's table salt or sugar or water or this beast right here, all we're going to do is add up all the atoms, just like what we did when we used the periodic table to find the weight of maybe one thing. For example, the weight of sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. Well, if I want to find the weight of, of chlorine, I've got to add its weight, which is 35.45 grams per mole. Okay? So when we do that, I've got another slide here. Uh, you can see I'm finding the molar mass of calcium chloride. So there's my calcium chloride right there. And that's one mole of calcium and two moles of chloride. Well, I look on the periodic table, I find out that calcium weighs 40.078 grams per mole, and chlorine weighs 35.45, but, and here's the important thing, there are two of them, right? So I multiply that by two, I get 70.9, and when I add them together, I get 110.983. So that's the molar mass of calcium chloride. So let's practice a couple of these. And we'll only do two because you'll, you know, after you've done a couple, it's pretty, pretty trivial. So let's do titanium oxide, right? Now for titanium, I look on the periodic table, and I find that titanium weighs um, 47.88. So 47.88 grams per mole. And I've got oxygen, right? 
which weighs, uh, we'll just call it 16 grams per mole, right? And let's titanium. There's only one there, right? So that's 47.8. And then, but oxygen, there's two, which gives me 32.00. And so that equals uh, 79.8. Oops, you know what? This was an 8 over here. 88. There we go. 72.88 grams per mole. So there's the molar mass of titanium. Now, for you, since you've got the idea, hopefully, here's a challenging one. Do this one. Pause the video, find the molar mass for aluminum nitrate, and see if you get what I get. All right, did you get a value of, oops, let me get it. Did you get a value of 165.01 grams per mole? Well, if not, let's do it. I've got aluminum that weighs 26.98 grams. Okay, I've got N that happens to weigh 14.01, and I've got O that weighs 16. Okay, and I'm leaving off the grams for one, being a little lazier. Now, how many aluminum? Well, there's only one, so that equals 26.98 grams per mole. All right, how many nitrogen? Well, let's look up here. I've got three nitrates, right? So that means I have three nitrogens. So that is 30, 42.03 grams per mole. And then last but not least, how many oxygens? Well, I've got three times two. I've got six oxygens. That gives me 96.0 grams per mole. And so you add that all up, you get one. 65.01 grams per mole. Okay, so just a quick little review. Now the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to start finding um, moles and grams uh, of compounds, whereas before we just did it with elements. So let me show you an example of that. So here is a little problem. It says, how much does 3.45 moles of sodium nitrate weigh? Alright, so what I do is I write out my starting amount 0.45 moles right and if we if we want this to cancel out one mole of that happens to weigh one mole of Na and O3 and I gotta look on the periodic table to find the molar mass of that compound alright and I get a value of roughly 85 85.0 grams okay? So what does that equal? That equals 293.25 grams. Okay. Now, if I'm going to round to three significant figures, my answer is going to be 293 grams. Okay. And there's your answer. All right. So pause the video. Try number two. See if you can uh, find out uh, how many grams of barium or how many moles of barium phosphate are in 68.2 grams. Alright, so did you get a value of 0 0.113 moles? Well, if not, let's just see how you should have done this. Um, the first thing I've got to do, I've got to, I've got to find the molar mass of barium phosphate. Now, barium phosphate, the formula looks like this. And so maybe you can see how important it is to be able to uh, put formulas together and so you can uh, write out the correct uh, formula to get their molar mass. So for barium, I'm going to go like this. Barium is 137.33. Now there's 3, which is going to equal 411.99. For phosphorus, phosphorus is uh, 30.974 times 2, which equals 61.948. And then for oxygen, we've got 16 times 8, or 128. So the molar mass of that beast is 601.94 grams per mole. Pretty heavy duty. Okay. So then I just take the number I have over here, which is 68.2 grams, 
and I know that one mole of this weighs 601.949 uh, grams and then that gives me the 113 oops get a slop here 0 0.113 okay so there's that so again pause the video try this last one see if it works out all right how'd you do if you got a value of 2.06 times 10 to the 23rd molecules then you're in great shape Okay, so the first thing I've got to do, by the way, the formula for carbon tetrachloride is C, C, L, 4, right? Tetra means 4, so 4 chlorines. All right, so I'm just going to write this out. I've got 52.6 grams, and then one mole. Now I've added it all up, and i got a molar mass for carbon tetrachloride to be 153.81. Make sure you get that. And then now that I have it in moles, I know that one mole of anything is Avogadro's number, 10 to the 23rd molecules. I'm just going to put MC for molecules because I'm lazy like that. So there you go. So that's how that works. So if any of this doesn't make sense, please ask me in class. And again, like always, we will practice plenty of these. And uh, hopefully you'll find that to be pretty, pretty straightforward once you do enough of them. Uh, see you next time.